Now that we've seen Meselson and Stahl's experiment that confirms that DNA replication is indeed semi-conservative, we can now look at the actual mechanisms of DNA replication. Let's first look at the prokaryotic mechanisms. The first of which that we'll see is the theta replication. Theta replication is a very common type of replication in prokaryotic cells or cells with a circular molecule of DNA that ends up with a shape in the middle of the process that looks like a Greek letter theta. Theta replication starts with the binding of proteins to the origin of replication. Binding of these proteins to the origin of replication unwinds the DNA and forms what's known as the replication bubble. As replication begins, DNA replication forms these two forks that go out in opposite directions of each other. As DNA replication continues and these two forks go away from each other, this telltale theta shape is formed. As replication continues even further, the two origins of replication from each strand of parental DNA approach each other, and when they actually reach each other and hit, the two strands are separated and released as two identical daughter molecules of DNA. Thus, when the parental cell undergoes replication, or binary fission in the case of bacteria, each daughter cell yielded will have the same genetic information as the parent. Let's now take a look at rolling circle DNA replication. Rolling circle replication is not too dissimilar from theta replication in that they both involve a circular molecule of DNA with a single origin of replication. However, with rolling circle DNA replication, we have an endonuclease, which will come and make a single-stranded cut in the DNA. When we make that single-stranded cut in the DNA, we have a three prime end and we have a five prime end. So which side, the three prime end or the five prime end, do you think that we will add these DNTPs to? And let's think, what do we need in addition to substrates and enzymes to actually carry out the reaction? What do we need to start replication? Well, we need a free three prime hydroxyl group. And so we're going to start adding to the three prime end of this molecule. So as replication continues with this new strand leading into this replication fork uh, created by the, this five prime strand, this five prime strand is going to unroll like string coming off of a spool of yarn. And eventually, when the molecule is complete, we're going to have a free single-stranded linear piece of DNA. We're going to have a new circular piece of DNA where we have one template strand from the parent strand. And we have a new strand. So there's also the question of what happens to this new strand? And what happens is kind of best answered, it depends because it can recyclize and form another circular molecule of DNA here as it's undergoing replication. It could also reform a circle and undergo replication at this point and form another circular molecule of DNA. It could also undergo linear replication and form a linear molecule of DNA. So there's a lot of different things that can happen to this extra strand that was unrolled from the original molecule of DNA. Now let's take a look at linear DNA replication. Linear DNA replication is indeed similar to circular DNA replication in that it is the semi-conservative replication of a double-stranded molecule of DNA using each strand as a template. However, a linear strand of DNA will have multiple origins of replication. And thus, during the actual process of replication, we will see multiple replication bubbles. During the replication process, replication will continue until these replication bubbles meet each other, resulting in the formation of new strands of DNA. And just like before, at the end of DNA replication with a linear strand, we have two genetically identical molecules of DNA that result. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true no matter what genetics class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are currently enrolled as a Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services. Our tutoring center is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson Building. You will find all the details you need to know about these services on our website, www.baylor.edu. tutoring You may schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online through Navigate, or just drop in during our open business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.